Hello, and welcome to Northeast Oregon. We're here today in the heart of the Oregon Wheatlands. In fact, this area around here once produced 1% of the nation's wheat crop. But this isn't a story about wheat. I'm here to tell you about Oregon's ultimate crop. If you were to add up the yearly totals, would outweigh everything else Oregon produces combined. In fact, because some of it appears on land that's managed by the National Park Service, they make a field guide that has dozens of different pictures and descriptions. So you can identify this stuff if you come across it in the wild. We're gonna head up to a national park right now and this stuff is so prolific, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna have any problems finding it. We're up here at Emigrant Springs State Park in the heart of the Blue Mountains. I chose this place because it's right in the middle of the forest, easy access to the trees, and <laughs> easy parking. I know I keep referring to the crop as it, and that's because I don't actually know the scientific name. But some of the local names include the Glidden Winner, the Elwood Reverse, we've got the Scut Aeroplate. It's known by a lot of names here in Eastern Oregon. All right, we're just skirting the tree line here. In a few minutes, I'm gonna duck in here to the right uh, in the gap that I saw, and we're gonna see if we can find some. Hey, big guy. Okay, whoa. All right, I found a patch of bare dirt here under the trees, and I've come across a stand of it right here. Let me show you. Okay, you see how the ground looks like it's just undisturbed? But if you look up just a little bit, you see you see right there, you see that T-post? Well, that means you found it. Oregon barbed f***ing wire. That's right. This is everywhere up here. And I absolutely hate it. There's so much of this crap all over the place here in Northeast Oregon. It just makes you want to leave the area. And there's so many different types. Look at this, this field guide, it's got pages and pages of different types and pictures and names of all the different ways to put sharpie poke little bits of metal onto wire to stab you and gouge your flesh or animal's flesh. That's its whole purpose, it just take junk out of you. So let's take a look and see what species we have here. All right. You see this little, little uh, quad prong design? Yep, that's the Ross four point right there. Two twisted strand wire with four point barb, patented June 10th, 1879 by Noble G. Ross of Chicago, Illinois. Well, thank you, Noble, because apparently all the other deadly shapes weren't good enough. Fun fact about tetanus, people actually think it comes from rusty metal, but it doesn't. <laughs> tetanus is actually a bacteria that grows in the soil, but around here we get so much wind that it blows the, the dust around and the dust collects on the barbed wire, so as soon as you touch barbed wire up here, you've got tetanus. Congratulations, <laughs> Oregon Trail, you've died of tetanus. Well, now that we've seen some of the wild strands of barbed wire, <laughs> you see, see what I did there? Uh, let me show you how much fun it can be in more domesticated rural areas. Because, trust me, barbed wire, or as I like to call it, tetanus rope, can be found everywhere. Just everywhere. This refuge is closed from September to March, so it can provide a haven a sanctuary. It has plenty of water and shelter and wetlands and it's the perfect place to live unless you're a wildlife with legs. You see, in order to reach the watery oasis that is this refuge, animals must first cross this four-strand barbed wire that protects the perimeter of the reservoir. And if they do that, if animals are desperate and thirsty enough to make it past that protected outer perimeter, the reservoir is still protected by the inner layer of barbed wire. Yes, this inner barrier is much better maintained, much newer. It even has the correct spacers between each strand to make sure that they don't collapse and allow thirsty animals an easy way in to access the water. Now, you may have noticed we've only been out in the wilderness so far. And you could be thinking, of course you're gonna find barbed wire there. Well, let me ask you this. Do you like kids? The designer of the school did. They put in a wonderful swing set, an excellent playground, 
and just up the hill they added plenty of barbed wire on the edge of the play field to make sure that the children don't vanish out into the prairie. The designers must have understood that children stay where they're told and know how to spot danger from a distance so they'll definitely avoid this on their own volition. Now, Pendletonians take the idea of safety very seriously. So schools and playgrounds and parks aren't the only place where you'll see that, that theme of let's keep people safe with barbed wire expressed. The Pendleton Adventure Trail Network is a perfect place to just go for a hike, take your dog for a walk, or even learn how to mountain bike. There's a gently rolling green loop along the top of the trail system that has only one serious downhill turn. Now I'm sure it's highly unlikely that a beginning mountain bike rider would ever make a mistake, especially on the steepest downhill turn of the entire green loop. But if they do, they will be kept safely in the patch of bike area by a strand or four of tetanus rope. And they won't be able to go over here to this nice green lush field where they can easily just roll to a stop. But as in the mountains and at the reservoir, this isn't the only place you'll find safety barbed wire. So if you'd like to come out and harvest some of Oregon's crop, all you need are a sturdy pair of work gloves, some wire snips, and make sure you're up to date on your shots. And when you come out, please take as much as you want, and then more, we've got, we've got plenty. <laughs>